so welcome everyone today is the day two of our demo series uh, for for anyone who is dialing in for the first time today so just wanted to remind you that whatever running notes i'm taking we are storing those running notes onto the google classroom okay if you already have joined google classroom good if in case you are wondering where can i find the link of google classroom okay. just ping us on this uh, number okay, through whatsapp and we will share the google classroom link with you that you can use to refer to the notes that are being that will be captured during the demo series also the videos will be uploaded to youtube for your benefit so that you can refer to them at later stage also. Now yesterday we started understanding what basically a business analyst does. Okay? And then while we were trying to go through it, we also tried to explain how the training program will help you understand the different concepts or terms related to the business analyst part. So in continuation to that, we'll, we'll continue our discussion. Yesterday we discussed still the prerequisites and the myths and assumptions around business analysts. Okay. Today we will initiate our discussion with the course content. Okay. What are the different topics that we are going to cover as part of this training program? So the entire training program is actually divided into three parts. The first part is for business analyst introduction. This is to ensure that everyone gets to know about the basics of business analyst. So we introduce things like what, what basically a business analyst does, what is a waterfall model, what is scrum model of software development. Okay, so we discuss broadly the SDLC cycle and within SDLC waterfall and the scrum methodologies what are the different types of it companies that exist today the different categorization of industries what you do as a ba or a business analyst in those companies then what are the core skills or competencies that are required as a business analyst okay so all these topics they ensure that we are actually level setting the field for anyone to understand more deeper or more advanced topics. So once we build our basics with respect to all these uh, industry like IT industry, team structure, uh, SDLC, SDLC software development life cycle, roles and responsibilities of a BA, then we move on to more advanced topics. That is take for example waterfall methodology and what are key activities that you will be doing within that take agile or scrum for example and then what are the key activities that you will be doing within that some activities will overlap okay? so though it may say waterfall methodology but stakeholder management is something that you will be doing both waterfall and agile as well okay? so we understand things like how do we manage stakeholders? What is RACI matrix? How do we define roles and responsibilities? What is a requirement? What are the different types of requirements we have? What is requirement elicitation? What are the different elicitation techniques that we have? What is requirement documentation? And why is documentation even important? And what are the different types of requirement documents that we'll be looking through? Then what is Agile, Scrum? What's the difference between Waterfall and Scrum? What are the different Scrum events or Scrum ceremonies or Scrum meetings? All mean the same thing. So we will look at things like sprint planning, backlog grooming, sprint demo, sprint, uh, sprint demo or sprint review, sprint retrospective, daily standups. What do these events or meetings or ceremonies mean? And what happens then as a BA, how do we manage product backlog by, by working on epics and user stories? Okay. What is velocity and what is prioritization? Okay. 
how does the story estimation the user story that we create how does the estimation of that story work and then towards the end once we have a good understanding of all these topics then we do a do's and don'ts for ba okay that is more like trying to understand what what should be your companion guide like what activities should you definitely do versus what activities that you should avoid as a ba now once we go through all these topics or while we are going through all these topics we have uh, planned some assignments as well along with these topics again these assignments will be uploaded to google classroom okay, along with the notes wherein you finish your assignment so that will act as a revision for for the activities that you that for the concepts that you will be studying along towards the end we have a case study plan for you wherein you we go through that scenario and then you guys will have to apply all these concepts that we have studied to come up with the user stories and the requirement document that we have and present it okay. so so that once we condense all this in the form of case study even the case studies or assignments are planned so that when you are working on it you may get to you may get across some of the doubts or questions or queries okay so through that also you can ask your question sometimes when we are going through a topic during a class we feel that we have understood it 100% but when we start doing an assignment around it we realize that maybe there's something that i am missing okay so that's the reason for these assignments or case studies so that they help you revise the concept plus ensure that you have fully understood it okay. so the way all these topics are being covered it is to ensure that someone who is from a non it background okay, through our business analyst introduction topics understand what an it industry is before deep diving with the what a business analyst will be doing now along with these uh, technical topics that we have there will be certain tools that we will be discussing as well okay so for example we will be talking about jira okay so jira is the tool where we will be creating all our epics or user stories or basically managing the product backlog through jira so how do we use jira what options of jira do we mainly scroll through so once we understand what a user story is and how do we document a user story we will then jump on to jira to understand how do we use this as an agile life cycle management tool okay so jira is an alm tool where alm stands for agile life cycle management along with this we will also be covering draw io okay so that's a tool that we will be using for creating our flow charts so as a ba when we create our requirement documents we need to present the current state of our software versus the future state of the software usually this depiction is done through a flow chart like activity diagram or use case diagrams so we will utilize draw io to see how can we use it to create our flow charts that can be then put into our requirement documents okay, these two will be our major focus now other than that it is assumed that a lot of people nowadays right from their college time to their office would have interacted with uh, the different products available under ms office uh, like microsoft word microsoft excel or even microsoft present uh, ppt as well or powerpoint so that that would be another aspect that i won't be covering in detail okay? but some of the assignments that we will be giving you they will utilize uh, they will ensure that you know uh, microsoft word or excel so that you can use them so together with those topics and tools will constitute to this entire training program 
now there's one more thing left in this training program and that is the preparation part okay so what happens in preparation is once we are done with all our technical topics and knowledge or uh, understanding of the tools then at the end of this training program we will be conducting two classes or two to four classes the first one will be on resume preparation okay so that is we will be sharing with you key points that you must put in your resume to highlight you know what you have worked as a ba okay? so that anyone looking at your resume can figure out that you have definitely worked on something as a ba okay? the second part is once our resume gets shortlisted then what's the next part we are called for interview so we will be discussing some of the commonly asked interview questions okay. so what are the commonly asked interview questions again uh, some of the questions related to documentations uh, flow charts with respect to scrum concepts scenario based questions so we'll be spending another two to three days over covering some of the commonly asked interview questions and what should happen or what should be the answer that you should give when you are asked those questions okay again towards this entire training program the emphasis will be on usage of the appropriate terms okay it doesn't matter how well you prepare how good knowledge you have if you are not able to present yourself with that knowledge okay people will always assume or think that you lack the required potential so the emphasis will be on using the appropriate terms like stakeholders, elicitation, requirement modeling, so that you always give interviewer an impression that you have worked on all these concepts. Okay. Now together, all these three, the topics, course topics that we talked about plus tools plus preparation part okay will constitute to our entire training program or creating flow charts okay now the next question that obviously comes is since we are covering all these three different aspects so how much time is it going to take to finish off this entire training program now there is no fixed timeline as such <coughs> sorry there is no fixed timeline as such that we will be covering these uh, topics within four weeks six weeks so what we have is is a quite flexible schedule so though we try to target to finish off everything within five to six weeks okay but please note that this is not a fixed timetable or timeline okay sometimes students will have more queries they want to understand more things maybe they are facing some problem or some situation or some scenario at their office and then maybe they want to have a discussion on that as well so based on on those all those points it may span up to seven weeks as well okay so again to reiterate though this would be ideal that we finish off this entire course within six weeks but please note that there is no fixed timeline as such of or there is no compulsion as to finish it in the entire six weeks okay. we try to work as per the as per the students on how much inquisitive they are what kind of questions are they coming through okay. trying to make it more and more interactive <clears throat> now any questions so far with respect to the course content that we are covering with respect to the tools we are covering or 
the preparation part or the timelines any questions that you guys might have okay i'll take the silence as though i mean no question so we'll move forward now what's the outcome of this training eventually we all are learning something because we want to understand new things or maybe learn new things so what are some of the key points that i am going to learn once i'm done with all the topics all the tools that that are being covered okay so the first point is what a business analyst's role is with respect to the IT company. Okay? What kind of role they play, what kind of work they do and how important they are with respect to, with respect to the software uh, that needs to be produced. Okay? Now what are some of the key requirement activities and how do you, how do you plan your work? Okay? We are obviously not going to cover all the theoretical or irrelevant topics around BA, which you are not going to use. Okay, key practical findings, or basically, this entire training program is based on the empiricism only. So, whatever experience I have gained by working as a business analyst for over 10 years, that is what I'll be sharing with you. Okay, so no more. Uh, theoretical concepts that goes on for months which you may or may not use at all okay. then what are the different elicitation techniques i have available at my disposal and how do i use them okay. and particularly interview technique as the elicitation technique because majority of the times all bas will be utilizing or focusing on interviews only then how do I measure the effectiveness of a requirement since I'll be writing down requirements. So how do I ensure whether I have written a good requirement or not? Okay. Once I gain sufficient experience, once I gain sufficient expertise, probably I can skip this criteria. But what is this smart criteria which helps us evaluate the effectiveness of a requirement? What are the different kind of artifacts that we prepare over the course of software development life cycle? How do I write down or represent requirements? Okay. How do I decide which elicitation technique to use under which scenario? What are the different aspects of flow charts like an activity diagram or a use case diagram? What are they? How do we draw them? what are the different requirement documents that are available what's the purpose of these requirement documents how do i ensure that i am creating the appropriate document by filling or by filling in all the mandatory sections then what are some of the necessary competencies and best practices for a ba okay. so necessary competencies like skills and best practices will be that do's and don't part of BA okay. then how do we ensure that you know we we are able to work effectively so right throughout this training program we will be ensuring that how do you conduct yourself to ensure that you are being productive at your best okay. even though you may be working as a BA for the first time but still I'll give you some tips and tricks with my experience that will help you get started okay the only thing that i require 
from all students is see as a business analyst is not easy or it is not complicated okay it depends on whether you want to perform that role or not okay for coding i understand sometimes it gets complicated because you have to understand what let's say java is what are the different methods or functions i have available in java which function to be used when okay so at least in ba business analyst perspective that complexity part is not there okay but obviously you have a different level of of difficulty which is what is stakeholder how do i manage my stakeholders effectively so those kind of things will definitely be there but if you are someone who is who is good in communication who is good in talking to people and who doesn't get affected by talking to a lot of people okay so as a business analyst obviously you will be attending lot of meetings talking to people sometimes people get frustrated but if you are someone who thinks that no no i can manage these things efficiently then definitely ba is the role for you okay we already covered this preparation part now comes the certification part okay now the first question that might come is uh, that might appear in your head is do i need to do any certification what are the certifications that are available so frankly speaking or at least still as of now a lot of organizations that are posting requirements of a ba they usually don't they don't post the requirement or make it a mandate that you have to have a certification to apply for the job okay so that's where i advise all the students that before you jump on to any certification okay understand the job market first based on my experience what i have seen is the job market for business analyst doesn't recommend or suggest that you should have a certification in order to apply for a job when you look at scrum master jobs they will say you should have a scrum master certification so they are kind of making it a mandate that if you have certification then only apply in case of business analyst the emphasis is more on experience that if you have the relevant experience then come and apply okay and not on the certification side so when there is no emphasis on the certification side usually what i recommend is why do you want to go ahead with certification by paying from your pocket unless if you are applying for jobs in a particular geography and in that particular geography the certifications are mandatory for a ba in that case you should definitely do but broadly speaking i haven't seen cases where at least in us or india where the certifications are mandatory so what i advise all the students is once you get into a job for ba once you have worked as a ba for 5 to 6 months then request the company that you are working for to pay for your certification okay usually all these organizations it companies they sponsor the certifications of their employees so once you join any organization you have spent some 6 months or whatever the criteria might be at the organization after that request them that they pay for your certification so that you can appear for it and then finish off the certification okay. but before getting into a job directly applying for the certification will add more pressure on you okay. looking at your certification the other person may think that you are extremely knowledgeable as you you don't just have relevant experience but you have certification as well okay so any answer here and there might go against you so if certifications are not a mandate in your geography which largely in my experience in us and india are not a mandate don't go for it okay but yeah definitely once you join any organization then after 6 months or so definitely ask your organization to sponsor your certification 
Now, these entire certifications are actually divided into three parts. So IIBA is, is the institute that is offering three certifications. One is entry level certification for BA. One is moderate level certification for BA and one is professional level certification for BA. Okay. So the entry level certification doesn't require any prior BA experience. Okay. You just have to go and register yourself on the IIBA website. Once you register yourself over there, there will be a, a Babu guide, okay? a Babu guide that will be shared with you. Okay? Once you obviously, once you make the uh, necessary payments, you go through that Babu guide. Now it's a PDF document that has a lot of theoretical concepts within it. So you go through it. Once you go through it, then you appear for exam. Once you feel you are ready. Whereas for others, CCBA and CBAP, a prior BA experience is mandatory. And how do they validate that you have prior experience or not? If you come over here on the last, last line references, that someone who holds a CBAP must refer you. Okay? There should be at least two people referring you. There should be at least two references confirming your experience. So that's how they ensure that you have the relevant experience that is required before you actually appear for the exam. Okay. Now, once you fulfill this basic criteria, obviously there will be certain fee like I mentioned. So once you either you can just appear for the exam or you become a member of IIBA by paying some fee and then uh the the exam fee will be slightly less for you in that case okay so for example if you are a non-member and want to give an exam you will end up paying 235 us dollars if you become a member then you end up just paying 160 us dollars okay now the exam pattern for all these three they, they comprise of multiple choice questions. Okay. The duration of the exam differs between ECBA to through CBAP. For example, in ECBA, you are given 50 multiple choice questions that you have to complete within 90 minutes. Okay. If you are unsuccessful in your first attempt, you can give up to three attempts. You can take exam up to three times in one year. If you fail in all three attempts, then you have to apply for next year. There will be a cooling of time of one year and then you have to appear. You can apply again next year. Okay. The same criteria applies for other two as well. Within one year, you can maximum attempts that are allowed are three within a year. Okay. Now for CCBA, you will be given 130 multiple choice questions that you have to complete within 180 minutes that is three hours okay and for cbap there will be 120 multiple choice questions that you have to finish within one to 210 minutes that is three and a half hours now ecba does not have any renewal criteria that means once you have it you you get the certificate okay? you don't have to renew it but for CCBA and CBAP, you have to renew those certificates every three years. That means they are valid only for a period of three years, post which you will have to go for renewals. So renewals could be as simple as paying another fee and then appearing for exam again. Or you participate in the activities that are conducted by IIBA, be a volunteer there, contribute there. And through your contributions, you earn CDUs. You can accumulate 60 CDUs and then use those CDUs to, to actually renew your certificate. Okay. Now again, like I mentioned, for, for any certification related requests. Now, 
if if it is mandated at your job level then go for it okay otherwise you don't have to worry about giving appearing for a certification now okay now from harsha trainings once the course is completed okay, we will be giving course completion certificate from our side course completion certificate from our side which indicates that you have attended ba training program for so and so duration with your name printed on it okay so that course completion certificate should not be confused as you know the ecba or ccba certificate okay that is completely different okay what we will be giving is a course completion certificate and not the certificate issued by iiba institute Okay, that's a completely different thing. Now, any questions that you guys might have? Uh, so, will we have any specified uh, date mentioned on the course completion certificate? Because uh, we are going to uh show them that we are having quite a bit of experience uh, with uh, respect to this domain so will that affect that no, ab absolutely not so you you can you can any time say that this was more of a refresher course so i i wanted to participate in a refresher course if you are already demonstrating that you have worked as a ba for let's say 7 8 years that this was more of a refresher course and not not a ba training program as such or if you if you want to show that yes the date will definitely be mentioned on it but the way to justify it is that it was a refresher course and not a complete training program so it wouldn't be a pro problem uh, if they want to really get a check of is it uh, true that we have a bit of experience in this yes there won't be any problem yes and regarding the handbook you mentioned earlier for the knowledge gain uh, with respect to uh, the ba uh, course guide uh, like do you believe that this uh, handbook would help us to get uh, extra concepts which might not be covered during this uh, 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 course period and uh, it might be useful for the um, roles and responsibilities we hold so actually from a roles and responsibilities perspective uh, what we will be guiding you is through sdlc so whether you work in agile whether you work in waterfall everyone follows the same software development life cycle okay so when we are going through the different stages or phases of software development life cycle i'll be guiding you what you as a ba will be doing in every stage now whatever you do in every stage becomes your roles and responsibilities on a practical basis okay now this babu guide definitely tells you that you will be doing some additional activities but will you be doing those additional activities on daily or on weekly basis no okay. even i appeared for that certification it it's a lot more theoretical in nature the only problem with that certificate is it it is lot more theoretical so you have to memorize many things that you might not be doing on a day to day basis or even on a weekly basis in your day to day responsibilities as a ba okay so for example it talks about class diagrams that you might never even prepare as a ba so but in order to appear for the exam you must know about it so what okay. we are focusing is 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 more practical approach that what what will help you on a day to day basis in order to do your job 
see eventually when you clear out any interview you then want to work for the company and then you don't want to work for a company with theoretical concepts and again that knowledge book what it tells is uh, it, it's more focused on BA technical concepts only. Uh, it doesn't talk about what is a user story, how do we create a user story, acceptance criteria. But when you join any organization, people will definitely ask you that how do you write user stories? Uh, give me example of a project that you worked on. How did you identify user stories around it? what was the uh, the theme behind it how did you write acceptance criteria give me an example of it whereas that's all is not covered in the in the certification guide at all okay okay uh, uh, any other questions <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, so one more question, Rahul. So, if uh, uh, suppose I have uh, experience in different domains like telecommunication, energy, and utilities, which is not much, uh, which might not uh, have needed uh, business analysts. Uh, priorly um how do i how will i be able to convert that experience into something uh, where bas are required uh, in the domain like as you specified healthcare or financial because i might not have a specific uh, uh, domain knowledge with respect to it and uh, coming to financial domain there were some there will be some codes is what i remember from uh, the internet so what would be beneficial to how to uh, go ahead with this if you don't have exposure to financial domain uh, but if you are applying let's say you spent most of your time in telecommunication industry or maybe something else and you have let's say not deep knowledge or not expertise but let's say you have good knowledge over there okay so you mentioned that in your resume that this is what i have knowledge on but if you are applying for a job that requires knowledge about uh, let's say banking system so usually in those cases i suggest students that they prepare a little bit about the domain knowledge as well so that during interview if anyone asks you like why should i hire you okay so you can always give them a good response like if you look at my resume it only talks about industries like telecommunication natural resources etc etc it doesn't talk about financial background at all or banking domain at all but i'm keen towards learning it one second before appearing for this interview i have taken some short course on youtube on trying to understand the banking domain and the terms that are used in it so that will really help you like sell out your case that even though you don't have the knowledge you have that inquisitiveness to learn now first thing that obviously people want is that you should have a good knowledge as a BA, that you should have a good understanding of how do you write stories and everything. Now, obviously, they it will be an added advantage if I am from banking domain or health insurance and if I get a BA who has worked in banking or health insurance domain. But do I always get such BA? No. Because people will be working across different domains. So what we also do is our primary focus is ensure that the person has appropriate knowledge about ba and if they are if you can assess or find out that they are willing to learn about the industry okay? because industry knowledge will not consume more time but building an expertise will so knowing about the basics of any industry maybe you will take a month or so but building expertise will consume more time so as a ba 
what is more important for me is at least I should know the basics. Why should I know the basics? Because when I go and talk to stakeholders, they will be telling me like, uh, uh, say for example, Reserve Bank of India, it's, it's the India's federal uh, bank. It has given new guidelines, okay? And if you don't know about banking industry, you'll be scratching your head thinking, what is RBI? What is this guideline that these people are talking about? Why? Because you don't even know the banking industry. In such cases, what happens is your meetings are unproductive. You will be spending more time in doing a simple thing as well. So it's where I suggest that you should have at least some basic idea so that when you go out to meetings, when you are talking to people, though you are not understanding the 100% context out of it, but at least if you understand 60%, 50% also, you'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to interrogate them further. So you'll be able to ask stakeholders the right or the relevant questions. Through those questions, you'll get even more doubts. So those will help you as a BA. If you don't learn the domain or if you are not willing to learn domain, then that will be a problem as a BA as well. As a developer, it will work if you don't know the domain. As a QA, it may work if you don't know the domain. But as a BA, you have no other option. You have to at least get to the basics of that domain. If not an expert, at least the basic part has to be there. Okay. So even you may not have an expertise okay you mention in your resume that you worked in telecommunication and prepare a little bit about let's say banking domain so that when when you are talking about it you at least use those terms to give them an impression see when i was switching to us health insurance domain i i prepared some of the commonly used terms like uh indemnity plans, PPO, I, I prepared for some of the terms. So when I appeared for interview, I told them the same thing. Though I don't have US health insurance knowledge, but I'm particularly willing to work and my willingness can be demonstrated through the course that I have taken. And I know about some of the basic terms. So that's how I deviated the interview towards the basic terms. When he asked, I gave the answer and he was pleased that at least you you are honest and then you have understood the basic terms at least. Okay. Okay, so uh, there's one more topic left uh, and then we will go into the, uh, I mean, we'll meet tomorrow again on uh, on some of the key differences between a role of a business analyst versus scrum master a business analyst versus data analyst and how artificial intelligence can impact the work of a business analyst okay but the the obvious question that comes is see we are going through a course or anything or we are trying to learn a new domain or a new concept or a new technology there has to be some reason around it there has to be some motivation around it okay so one such motivation is actually career growth okay how does my career journey look like if i start working as a ba okay what can i expect in my career or how will it shape through if I start working as a business analyst. Now typically business analyst designation is, is something that is uh, suitable for people with up to five years of experience in IT. If you have more than five years of experience you are obviously looking for a senior business analyst roles. So the difference between a business analyst and a senior business analyst would be that you as a senior BA, you might be helping out your uh, juniors as well. Okay? So you might be grooming them, coaching them, guiding them 
or even helping them on their projects as well okay because that is the expectation that every organization will have that you being the senior person you don't just do your work but help your juniors out as well okay so this would be typically for people with more than 5 years of experience now the next phase could be uh, and that may introduce a shift in your uh, not just your uh, your career expectations but your pay structure as well and that would be product owner role okay now once you have spent sufficient time as a ba and particularly uh, let's say if you spent Six or six plus years in the same industry. Let's say you have been into uh, banking domain or health insurance domain for six plus years, and you have built good expertise over it, and you have spent significant amount of time doing BA activities as well. Then, for you, what would be the next path? That will be the product owner path. Okay, wherein what happens is. you are responsible for designing the product or an application to say okay so when i say designing it does not mean that the technical design as such but basically you are responsible for carrying out the vision or the changes that are needed in the product so people can come and give you recommendation but you being the product owner you have to decide whether their recommendations are relevant to my application or not okay maybe assume that you know for e-commerce application there could be different integration points so for example there could be a customer management where users who log in trying to place order there could be a vendor management portal there could be an online payment portal for both of them okay there could be customer support as well okay there could be different elements that will together give us the impression that e-commerce is working as one single application but if you come into it industry the one single application that you see on the surface is actually multiple smaller applications that are working together okay so these multiple smaller applications everyone will have a product owner okay there will be a po or sitting over here there will be a po sitting here there will be a po sitting here and there will be one for customer sorry customer support as well Okay. similarly there could be n number of different smaller applications and there could be one one product owner sitting in all those applications okay and then within those product owners you will have senior bas and bas working on that application so on the surface the one big application that you see which is doing all the task is nothing but amalgamation of multiple smaller application and those smaller applications each will have their own product owner okay so once you become the product owner you are responsible for ensuring that you maintain the vision and the development for that particular application that nothing in that application moves without your approval okay people can come in give recommendation give suggestion about what changes should be done but it is you who have to approve of it before things move forward so that will bring in a significant shift in your work ethics as well that right now from talking to stakeholders to gathering requirements now you are more of a decision maker okay so you are responsible for even working one one level above to identify what could be the next changes in my product see as a ba one good thing is most of the requirements are actually coming from the stakeholders you are truly not being innovative about where the product or where the application should move forward as a product owner you will be responsible for that you will have to 
keep a check on what are the trends that are happening around in the industry you are working on how can we integrate those trends into our application okay. for example as a ba you may not worry much about whether artificial intelligence is needed in your application or not you will be worried about what my stakeholder says to me but as a product owner you will be thinking about pain points in your application and if ai can help address those pain points okay. then the next point or next part in the product owner journey is is actually the product manager okay where now you are responsible for handling client interactions and multiple product owners at your place okay. now obviously post product manager you get into leadership roles so that depends purely on your interest but the product owner product manager are some of the very lucrative high paying jobs with lot of accountability okay uh, a payment does not come without accountability maybe as a ba you have lot of responsibility but less of accountability as a product owner and product manager you have lot of accountability and less of responsibilities okay because you are delegating most of your ideas vision to the to the ba okay so you are communicating your ideas to ba and then it is ba who has to work on writing down detailed requirements for your idea and ensuring that how do how does it get implemented okay so obviously as a <clears throat> now the next thing could be from a job safety perspective that since i am not doing any coding work how safe or secure is my job okay now it is often a myth that a ba is considered as a non technical person okay for me a software is never built without involvement of these three people okay these three people are majorly contributing towards building a software okay so they all are all are technical people a ba a developer a qa it's just that these technical people have different roles and responsibilities a ba is contributing technically by writing down requirements a developer is contributing technically by writing down code a qa is contributing technically by by doing that appropriate testing that is needed okay so these three roles are technical roles on top of that a ba is a client facing role wherein you will be talking to your stakeholders on a more frequent basis okay so you obviously get an opportunity to build good rapport or relationship with your stakeholders which further enhances your chances of job security now assume if i am working with a client and that client is appreciative of my efforts okay? the client keeps on sending appreciation emails maybe every quarter every four months and my leadership knows about it do you think my leadership will touch me if if anything goes wrong if there's any like financial crisis or some situation like that they'll have to think multiple times okay that this person has a very good rapo and not just good rapo the client is appreciative of the effort what if we try to replace this ba with another ba will another ba be as good as my current ba so that is one advantage that we get as a ba that you you can obviously build a good rapport with the clients if clients are appreciative of your efforts that's an indication of i will not say 100% job security but to an extent okay. so obviously they will if if someone is sending nice appreciation emails your it company leadership or management will have to take that into consideration as well so from a job security or a job safety perspective as long as you stay in technical roles that is as long as you stay in ba developer or qa role I think you will have a good job safety 
if you move into non technical roles like management completely management which is mid level management not leadership roles but mid level management then there is a little bit of skepticism there okay so again tomorrow when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence and ba we will revisit this uh, topic of job safety again okay so just to give you my perspective i'm not saying whatever uh, i'm saying is 100% correct but just my take based on what i have seen the usage of ai so far based on that i'll i'll throw in my perspective of whether ai is making our job more safe more secure or is it going to take away that okay so we'll dial in tomorrow again go through the topics of first understanding key difference between ba and data analyst and ba and scrum master and then continue for the next half half an hour on impact of ai on our on the role and responsibilities that we perform okay now before we end our demo for today any any questions that you guys might have um so you were saying that the next level for a ba would be a product <coughs> owner right so yes. uh, what if there is a particular feature uh, development uh, that is going on that a product owner has designed and what would be the impact on business and uh, like the product owner if the feature uh, development is not on time or there has been a bit of slack uh, maybe due to any other factor and what would be the factors that would lead that product owner is responsible for the lack so the simple solution in it industry is is, is being proactive okay so mm -hmm. if if you are let's say i give you a timeline to work on something and i say that you give it to me by the end of sprint and sprint duration is 2 weeks on the last day of the sprint if you come and tell me that uh, sorry this cannot be delivered or this cannot be done so what will happen naturally the stakeholder will get angry that what 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 were you doing for the entire 2 weeks why am i getting to know this on the last day think of yeah. normal customers also if i am expecting to see my mobile phone getting delivered today and today itself if you tell me that's due to some logistic issues we can't deliver your phone i'll be angry but if you tell me that i am going to deliver a phone after 3 days and you tell me today itself that hey we are facing some logistic challenges and we won't be able to deliver it in 3 days also we are working on fixing the challenges we are facing but it may take up to one week now you are informing me in advance so me getting angry is is now less probable okay so as a ba usually i advise everyone or even when we work as a product owner is to keep a tab on the work that what exactly are you guys working where where have you reached are you facing any road blocks or any hiccups that may jeopardize the timelines if you tell me everything is going hunky dory no problem nothing at all and on the last day you give me a surprise then obviously it cannot be on me okay so i'll put pin it on uh, scrum master that you are responsible for managing your team what were you doing why weren't you monitoring the team every day i was getting a response from ba and from scrum master that everything is going as expected then what is this surprise on the last day okay so that won't be on me but as a ba if if you build a good rapport with these developers often these developers are little hesitant in giving any negative news that i cannot deliver the work on time but if you build a good rapport with them they would tell you that also that yes i am facing some challenges use that rapo and inform your stakeholders in advance but don't just inform about the negative news that we may not be able to meet the timelines you supply with the uh, with the action that you are going to take if i say i cannot meet the timeline that is not enough 
what am I doing to actually meet timeline? And if I am not going to meet timeline, what's my revised plan? So that my stakeholder gets a feeling or an impression that I'm not simply sitting idle. I'm taking some action. Okay. Okay, so being proactive alone will help you a lot. Whenever we go for stakeholder, I mean updates, if it's a negative news, we always go with an action plan that why it was delayed and what are we doing to in order to bring it on track despite our action if we can't bring it on track then what is our plan b okay uh, it's not just about meeting the timeline it is about not able to deliver a particular feature in the way they want it they're not able to uh, give the exact product uh, at the last minute that saying that if we are using a tool of or if we are using any particular uh, technology to build that uh, feature and they find out at the last minute that this cannot be achievable through this technology or something like that if we get some sort of uh, disturbance of that so as a ba you are you are technology agnostic so you did not decide say for example i want to build a great user interface and someone from the technical side told that let's use python to build it i did not decide the technology it was more of of the the technical team that decided <coughs> sorry so tomorrow if they come and say that this cannot be done so you have every right to question them that why it cannot be done what has changed over time did i change some requirement that let made you believe that this cannot be done through python or it is maybe your lack of knowledge or understanding that this cannot be done maybe initially you thought we can build the entire ui using python later you realize that python is not good for designing websites maybe we should use react js or something else okay so any technological gaps are are usually not on you because in the starting itself when you give down requirements you will have discussion with technical lead or technical architects a detailed discussion that this is what my requirement is and how do i fulfill it with with your knowledge okay so they will give us a design that this is the design that i am giving to you using the java technology or whatever which will fulfill your design now do i actually know whether java can do all those things i'm not sure but i can just review the design that all my requirements are being fulfilled in your design i'm happy with it okay. now if you come at a later stage then whose mistake is it is it a, a ba's mistake but unfortunately we cannot point on them also a ba and technical team they they all belong to it industry so you cannot say that i did not make this mistake it is the technical team only so when you are having internal discussion within your it company you can obviously point fingers that technical team made the mistake i did not do anything wrong but when you go to client or stakeholders for communication you cannot say that my technical team is dumb they don't know anything obviously you will have to own that mistake that we made a collective mistake we thought that you know something like this could be solved using java or python but it is not being solved and why is it not being solved like i said whenever we go to deliver any negative news we always go with the why part what what is not being done why it is not being done and then comes the next part what is our action plan and then in it what is the typical way to implement action plan you work overnight okay you work for long hours you made a mistake you initially committed that you will give the work in two weeks on the last day you are saying this technology is not capable of doing something i don't care work for two days straight two days 12 hours every day 14 hours every day and give me the work okay 
but usually such instances will will be very uh, rare if you see because most of the time either you are working on a r and d project research and development that will uh, that is bound to you know evolve over time any r and d project is not a is not a fixed cost is it, it it keeps evolving you try something you realize that it fails and then you try something different okay if it is not r and d if it is regular development work then it follows a fixed pattern okay so the uh, the situation that you presented it is more applicable to r and d projects now how many of the r and d projects are we truly working in india or in us or anywhere else if you go to product based companies like google meta or microsoft they will they may be working on lot of r and d related projects but how many of those r and d projects are we working on we majorly working on fixed cost projects that this is the work i want this is the work that you should do either there is already an application available you enhance it or you redesign my existing application or you make some modifications to it okay thank you okay this uh any other questions so after completion of the course the resume preparation will be start from 5 years experience right not 5 years i mean if you have 3 years experience let's say or 4 years experience then you can mention that only okay so you don't have to say 5 years 5 years was just an example i was giving okay one more question actually to compare with the developers and testers there is no free time for b i think so because uh, iteration by iteration and uh, daily scrum daily calls also daily status calls also they need to um, recollect uh, last iteration stories also right so i uh, there is no free time free time means uh, breathing time see tester will for example tester will have time like after receiving the requirements and to one week for test case preparation and one week for review and third week execution like that so but uh, developers also same like without uh, receiving the requirements and all but for ba what is the breathing time i am asking so uh, good question but see breathing time is in your hands okay so initially when i when i was a fresher in it industry usually what happened is i was given task that this is the task finish it in one day finish it in two days Okay, and and I had no other option. Being a fresher, just adhere to the timelines. What happened is once I gained more experience, I was able to question back some of the estimates. Suppose you gave me some task saying that finish it off in two days. Now based on my experience, I am thinking that it will take three days. Why do I think three days? I provide the justification. What am I going to do in three days? Two days do the work. One day just enjoy. so breathing time is actually in your hand if you if you can manage it manage as in if you can give some additional efforts extra efforts just for review just for uh, usually we take our extra hours in terms of review that i want some additional hours for reviewing the requirements okay i want some contingency hours like that we will give let's say if someone is giving me two days i will take three days to do a work instead of 3 days i'll finish off the work in 2 days only but don't tell anyone that you finish the work in 2 days okay just take the work for 3 days so that way you are not overburdening or over stressing yourself and finish off but yeah like you mentioned you will have continuous flow of work but that will not keep you like occupied 100% of your time there will be a continuous flow of work you will have work right throughout 12 months but especially among those 12 months also the last two months like i was saying november and december towards the end of november and whole of december there will be very less work you know given that uh, the 
the us from us itself lot of work will not come that is okay uh, per year one month two months everybody have but for each every iteration developer and tester has some time but uh, why be has this much of, but even though why why we need to learn be why we have to so many courses are why preference why we have to prefer for be well, it's nothing like that so you will also have your breathing time even when you work on requirements suppose i'll give you a real example suppose i am working on a requirement and yesterday i was supposed to meet with the client and they cancelled the meeting so what do i do just meeting cancelled so i set up a meeting for today so what did i do yesterday nothing i was hoping that i can talk to them based on our discussion then i will go back and do the analysis but nothing happened yesterday so now all those activities will happen today so yesterday was breathing space for me and the same thing applies in your case as well when you start working as ba it won't be like every day will be hectic for you it is what will be hectic is that you will have to talk to a lot of people like a developer will ping you asking doubts a qa will ping you asking doubts the stakeholder may want some updates from you your leadership may want to see what's what's in our pipeline what kind of work do we have in pipeline do we have sufficient work for our team or not so you will have to respond to a lot of people but does that mean that you will not have breathing space no okay. that's the good thing about it industry you go into any role you will always have breathing space it's just that what will become hectic for a ba is at some point people who are not interested they often complain that why do i have to talk to these many people but in starting stage uh, we have some pressure from leadership like uh, who has more experience in ba that that people and developers we have some pressure the dev manager also will force us right no no nothing like that see the good thing about you being a ba is if you get requirements from stakeholder good you can continue with it but if you don't get requirements from stakeholder if your meetings are cancelled then the other person can pressurize you but the same thing can happen by you also na no? i mean you can also pressurize them that now i have given you requirements give me the work give me the work okay so if if people are there specifically mid level management people okay so they are there to point out blames on others don't worry whenever the work comes and if you are being honest with your work like if there is some work if you are meeting with stakeholder and not documenting requirements obviously it's your fault but if you are meeting with stakeholders and documenting your requirements and giving it on time then no one will question like usually in the current sprint i am working on preparing stories for one month after sprint not for next sprint the sprint that will come in next month why because i am building the pipeline for month by month so usually in september i will work for stories that my team has to do in october if you work on next sprint basis you will always be running behind time okay? and dev managers will always be complaining that my team does not have enough work so as a ba what we try to do is we try to plan for next one month in advance that maybe talk to stakeholders see how the pipeline looks if the pipeline is strong build the user stories or requirement for next one month okay so that my while my team is fully occupied in the month of october i am working on identifying requirements for november so that way they are not sitting idle usually dev managers will point at you when they see that their team is sitting idle that they don't have any story to work on 
so don't work on sprint by sprint basis rather than work on month after month basis if you don't see any work at all where stakeholder says that there is not enough work then obviously you have an opportunity to talk to product owner that the stakeholder is telling me there is no work what should i write as user story the stakeholder has to give uh, the product owner has to give some work if there is not enough work maybe let go of some developers and testers but little bit risky is there like uh, suppose for example a uh, new iteration has started and last iteration already new iteration stories has started by ba and uh, current iteration they have to mention in jira there is uh, in in calls and all we use it to tell like there is a link uh, last iteration this link story is there please refer like that we use it to mention uh, review meetings and all right so little bit uh, uh, I, um, idea about that story and all depth of story and all right yep right now uh, you might be uh, thinking from a qa perspective or a developer perspective but when you start working as a ba you will have that idea so since you are going to create stories you will be the owner of stories all these user stories so you will have that idea you will have the bigger picture in your head if i create a, a user story and if i ask you to remember or link things it will be difficult for you but as a ba when i am creating down requirements when i am creating down user stories for me it becomes easier to manage and that is the part of this training program as well that how do we create user stories how do we link user stories on what basis and how the linking will help so for a ba it will be easy for others qa and developer for them it may be difficult yeah correct and some documents also they will show in meetings and all so those documents are prepared by ba only right so that type of technical knowledge if we don't have means what need to do uh, by writing the documents and all so because you have not written a document you will definitely feel that it is difficult but when we go through this entire training program you will get an opportunity to write down a document okay all it takes is first attempt at writing a document and then your fears are you know diminishing if you don't write it at all right now what you are seeing is a full fleshed document in in front of you and you think that how they would have written this how they would have captured all this data but when we go through all these data points during our training program you will realize that it is relatively easy to capture all these details i'm not saying extremely easy relatively easy and when you do it like two three times it 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 becomes like a habit for you so you will not find it that difficult okay one person from it background to convert into ba that people that person career has turned into non it or after 3 years or 4 years if she want to come again it it is easy ba is ba is already a technical person in it na you are already within it so you don't become non it just because a ba just because you are getting into ba does not mean you become non it you are still part of it industry like i mentioned over here you see these three people together they help build a software okay. so these three people together are still it people i from it only whether you jump from ba to developer developer to ba or ba to quality analyst and then quality analyst to ba you are still part of the it industry only but yeah if you become a ba and later you want to jump to developer or something you can definitely but again like see in order to become a ba you are trying to learn about the concepts of ba similarly if you want to jump from ba to developer or qa 
you will have to revise those concepts again that what i do as a qa what are the activities that happens okay thank you Yesterday you have mentioned like uh, from Dev only you converted into BA. So as a Dev, after completing the iteration or sprint, you can wash your hands and uh, you can uh, have some time. But BA means uh, like likewise. I, I I thought that's what I have asked these many questions. So I I find BA less stressful than development. So as a developer. There was a lot of stress about learning, keep learning new technologies, keep learning, uh, take care of uh, not just the development, but the deployment activities as well. And as your experience grows, you have to manage your team as well. You have to ensure that you're not just doing your work, you're ensuring that your team does their work as well. So it, it's not a difficult work. I was I would call it as stressful work. Whereas when I become BA, then senior BA, then product owner, it was not stressful. Again, work-wise, every work will have its own challenges, but at least it was not stressful. Okay, but uh, junior level BA also, we can continue our career. Nobody will ask, right? Nobody will ask, no. Nowadays, the the organizations are shifting towards technology driven people so you want to be a ba be ba for your entire career you want to be a developer be the developer for your entire career earlier in india there used to be a shift like once you complete 10 years 12 years you have to shift into management role if you don't shift into management role people will start questioning why are you still working as a ba or as a developer but now those things are changing so again in the upcoming days it will be more focused on the people who are uh, inclined towards building a software so we don't want more people in management we want more people in uh, in building a software like ba developer qa if everyone becomes a manager then who will do the groundwork so that is advantage or disadvantage? Advantage only, right? Uh, that is advantage only. Managers are a little bit, uh, what do you say? Uh, the, the job security is less, okay? You are not directly contributing to any, uh, any software application as such. I'm not saying the role is useless, but what happens is whenever there is recession time take for example 2020 covid time so when i was with accenture during that time most of the layoffs initially started with managers okay so suppose we had five managers then one manager was asked to lead all the teams remaining four managers were removed and we all continued our work as is so what even organizations do is they first try to identify the non-productive layer, non-productive as in non-billing layer, which are not contributing to software development as such. Remove those. If we still have to remove, then you come to developer, QA or BA. Otherwise, the first part is to remove all the people who are not contributing to any billing by the client. Okay, I have one more question, final question. Actually, I will think my mindset is uh, um, not go uh, high level, not go high package and all. Work is cool and package also not uh, not a problem. Work is cool. So that is possible in VA role? Yes. Okay. That yeah, is possible in all roles. If you, if, if you want to be a QA, you can be a QA like that. You can be a developer like that. In fact, all companies will love you that uh, you don't want promotion. You don't want good package, but you continue to deliver good work. So everyone in, will love in, you. In, as a QA, uh, in QA, sorry to interrupt you. And in QA, for example, if I get six years, seven years, manager or TL will ask, still you are in a very low level. 
package is very less but uh, uh, still you are you have more experience but uh, why you are not converting to team lead by doing certifications and uh, by uh, by getting more knowledge in other technologies so in qa also that is not a safety uh, by getting more experience still you are in three level still you are in four level why uh, like that they are asking so that's what i'm asking this one in ba cool uh, job is cool package also not a problem then is it continue to life see in india mindset uh, uh, few people will think like government job how they will do their work and they will go home that's all no pressure no at all some people will think like that no uh, no answer also mm -hmm. not at all problem just like that yeah so some of the service based companies like tcs accenture usually they they follow this structure okay, so what you are suggesting that if you have 10 years of experience, why are you still working as a QA? Why are you not a lead QA? If you have 12, 14 years of experience, why are you still working as a team lead? Why are you not a manager? Okay. So they they have their hidden agenda. If you go to, go to any service-based organization that are servicing multiple clients, they want more people in management. I'm not saying they don't want people in at the QA level, but continuously there is a churn. So Accenture like Accenture, TCS, Infosys, they handle lot of different, different category of clients. So they keep requiring lot of people in the management area. So they feel that if you have good experience, you should move upwards. Whereas if you see now the trend is, uh, Anthem has Anthem is a U.S. health insurance company that has opened its uh, uh, its delivery center in India. Then similarly, other U.S. based health insurance companies like UHG and others they have opened their delivery centers in India. If you go and work there, there will be no pressure. If you are a QA, be the QA. If you are a developer, be the developer only. But yes, if you be in service based companies then based on the company that you are in specifically these uh, highly ambitious companies like tcs infosys accenture they want people to be ambitious as well so they would not like if you remain a qa for 15 years they will start thinking why is this person still a qa for 15 years she should be a manager by now there is definitely something wrong with her if she does not become manager, then who will handle my clients? Like that, they may think. So, there, yes, that will be a challenge in the service-based organizations. Any other questions, guys? No, we are over time, but uh, thank you so much for for your patience and sticking here uh, we'll be meeting tomorrow at 7 a.m ist again tomorrow will be our demo three we'll be discussing uh, the key differences with ba and other roles and the impact of ai okay so do join us for tomorrow thank you so much